Hello fellow planters. What's growing in your pot today? I'm cultivating up a new video log so that I can bring information to all of you about bringing nature indoors and share some of the ways that I've done it. This is a very informal sort of video series where I plan to just take you through some of the things I've done. I think I'll start with my absolute favorite and possibly the most complex things I build, vivariums. Vivariums are plant and animal habitats. They encompass an entire ecosystem. They can be anything from a desert to a tropical oasis in your home, your own little patch of nature. So let me show you a couple different kinds I've made so you can get an idea of things that might be right for you. And if you ever want to learn more, always check out everyonecangrow.com for more information. Let's go take a look. Here we have my most traditional style of vivarium. These are 20 gallon tall on the outsides here and here. Yeah. And a 20 gallon long in the center done as an arboreal cage. You can see my sweet little arboreal geckos. That's Rubra. She doesn't want to say hi, but we're going to make her. She's like, wait, what? Hey, Rubra. What's up, Tubbers? You can see why I call her Tubby. She's an adult female red bicolor crested gecko. She's uh, about five years old. And I have Rufus, who is the, like, <sighs> he's not the friendliest boy. He's not like mean or anything. He's just scared of me. You would be too if you had a big old monster coming in saying hi and you weren't raised to be a friend. So that's Rufus. He's a red male bicolor crested gecko. And then I've got my girl Zeb Zeb. My first crested gecko ever was actually Sabrina. She's only three. My other two are about five. And this is Sabrina. I can tell you something about these crested geckos is, as you can see, a couple of mine don't have tails. Now, Rubra, I bought her without a tail. She was just too precious. And you know what? The tail doesn't matter. Crested geckos in the wild are from New Caledonia. And they don't grow their tails back like your average gecko. So about 80% of the ones in the wild don't have their tails. And I think we're disturbing Zabrina a little bit. You see how she's uh, picking up her breath? She's like, oh man, you're loud. I don't like this too much. And she's very awake. So well, I don't know if I want to try to take her out today. I'll show her to you some other time when she's a little less hyper. She's all happy and excited about life right now because she's awake. So as you can see the interior of these, you'll notice there's, of course, plants. This is a, here's a little poo-poo. Oh. I'm sorry, I don't have any food for you. She's so sweet. Uh, there's plants. I've got some uh, ficus. I've got a, uh, um, what the heck is this called? Chefrolera arbicola. You can tell it's not doing that great. I need to cut it back, but she just loves sitting on this so much. I just won't move it. She gets what she wants. But this has natural soil, plants. There's insects in the soil. It's really hard to show the insects because they're tiny. I'll have to try to dig them out sometime and do a video specifically on what kind of bugs I use just so you can see what I've got. And then you'll see down here a different type of vivarium. Now these are much, much smaller and there's a reason for it is there's little babies in here. Let's see if I can do it without shading the light too much. Oh, and there's the baby. See, baby, absolutely tiny. Very quick and they're still not fully tame. But they never are, because these are wild animals. But this is what happens when they're wide awake. Working with them at night's not the best time. <laughs> but you'll notice I don't have any live plants in these, and that's because I'm not giving them enough light. So I just put some fake plants in there. But they still have the springtails, isopods, worms, and of course leaf litter for everybody to eat, for all the other insects to eat. So we'll just go ahead and put this back. Poor little guy runs off and I have several of these all of these are baby crested geckos these are the youngest I have them by just nomenclature because I really want 
when I help them find their forever homes, that's when I want them to get their names. I do not want their names to be something I came up with so that way they lose their name. I want their name to be forever for them. And then you'll see like I have my insects, like uh, my springtail culture, my isopod culture. This is not what it says it is. It's actually a mushroom culture. Well, it's growing fungi, but not what I wanted. We might play with that one later. Another vivarium I have is for Arcus. So all of these, as a matter of fact, let's do this in order. All of this is tropical vivariums. You have crested vi uh, greco vivariums here. And for the adolescents, the ones who are a little bit older and a little bigger, they go into these. These are iris. And I can try to find the link so I can put it down below. As a matter of fact, I might want to turn the light on so we can see what's going on. All my lights are timed, and right now it is nighttime, so the lights are all off. You can see somebody's painting with their food in there. Very common uh, crested gecko. Fun times. This one is uh, one of the smaller ones, but I have five, so five babies got into new bigger cages, and I intend to do all of them this way. And until they get better coverage, I'm just keeping them with a combination of live and fake plants and sticks, of course, with the same combination of springtails, worms, and isopods inside of here. This is their food, which is just Pangea. Uh, I'm using three different types of Pangea, complete different flavors for just to keep them going. This is probably the breeder because I like to give them that breeder at least a couple times a week, even though they don't really like it. I've noticed that they, mine prefer the Red Pangea, the one that's just Pangea with insects. It doesn't have a specific flavor annotation with it. This one is was born April 3rd, 2019. It is a male. And I can do a special video on just how I know that. Because it's pretty cool how I figured it out. And was able to get like a little microscope out and take some pictures to get all that figured out. But let's go figure out the other ones. I guess I should take an aside here and say, you'll notice these cages aren't that tall. They're only 13 inches tall. And these are the same square inch area as this cage here, which I would suggest is the minimum size for an adult crested gecko. It's slightly bigger than a 12 by 12 by 18. It is, um, what are these? I want to say 13 by 16 by 24. So you get more square inch with the by doing your cages this way rather than buying 12 by 12 by 18s. I understand why people say that 12 by 12 by 18 is a minimum size for adult crested geckos and why a lot of people say they aren't. Uh, it's just like how there's a minimum size for you to survive as a human being. Like I live in this bedroom. This is all of my space and you can see two thirds of it is taken up by my animals and the other half that I'll show you some other time is my garden. So you can survive in several different sizes of space and so can these animals. Is it the best? Well, maybe, maybe not, but I would say the best is to leave them out in the wild, but we don't want to do that because we want to watch them and observe them and take care of them and study them and all that good stuff. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. So long as you take care of them to the best of your abilities. You'll notice there's my little baby. You're not up yet? Well, that's okay. Again, this is different plants, but same idea. They each have their own light. They each have their own fan. And they each have tons of these little holes poked in it to keep it to where they can uh, breathe and get good air circulation. You'll notice that I don't put holes in the front. What I'm not really showing you is the holes in the sides and the holes in the back. It goes through both layers. So there's the inner drawer on these, and then there's this outer cage. So why I chose these is because if you say one of these animals does manage to get out of these tiny, tiny cracks uh, in the top or in the back, uh, all it can't really get out of this crack. But there's a similar crack in the back that's a little bit bigger. It's hard to show you from here. In fact, I can't see it at all. Um, it's right. Where's my finger? Where's the camera? There it is. That little tiny space right there. If I knew how to edit, I could do it post, but I don't know how to do that. So 
this is what you get. But that tiny little crack right there is how they could possibly get out into this outer container. But they can't get out of the outer container, so they're good. <laughs> There's no... Everything is sealed all the way around. It's a drawer inside of a unit. They're not going anywhere. And each one is individual. They're each stackable. Please focus. And you can see this one. Oops, I pressed the wrong thing. Just tried to touch screen the, the sticker. <laughs> This one has a deformed left front foot from an injury a long time ago. And he's a troublemaker because this one's always getting his little butt in trouble. He's a lot of fun. Or she. Or oh, I didn't put the gender on that one. I don't remember. I know it though. I have it written down. <sighs> that was the one that was sleeping. And then you can see like there's this one. And each one is unique and has a unique variety of plants. This one lost its tail to the great vacuum uh, disaster of two weeks ago. I was vacuuming my room and this one just lost its mind about it and decided it didn't need its tail anymore. And like I was saying earlier before I distracted myself, Sabrina lost her tail while we were just chilling on the couch taking pictures. We were doing a photo shoot. Perfect quiet house, perfect quiet everything. She just decided to poof, and then that was it. Just dropped her tail on me. Scared the crap out of me, scared the crap out of her. Um, I put her away as soon as I could, and then had to fight her wiggling tail to get it into the garbage, because it was just a nightmare situation, because that thing moves like, oh my god, it moves so fast. It was terrifying to me. Believe me. That's like the worst part of whole keeping these animals is when they drop their tails and you're there. I didn't know uh, my December baby here. I didn't know she dropped her tail. I actually had to dig around her cage to find it so I could throw it away. That's kind of gross. But yeah, that's animals. That's keeping animals. You got to know what you're dealing with. This one has some neon pothos in the back. That's that bright yellow one. It's not that bright yellow in real life. It's actually much more green. And then here's the baby. Look at the pattern on you. Wow. Really looks like it's daddy. All right. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't be bugging you guys so late at night. You're so awake. So hyper. But that's each cage. It's amazing. They're actually a lot calmer usually, but not at night. And then this one is uh, one that's not related to any of my babies. This is going to be my a new breeder female in the future. But we'll have to wait and see. You got a little pilea in the back. and I'm not, Or is that pepperoni? Oh, shoot. I'll have to look it up. I don't remember. I know most plants, but you know what? There are more plants than there are me, so it's really hard to remember all of them. Sorry if my camera's a little shaky and fighting the freaking fungus gnat. Just look at that gorgeous girl. My goodness. Now, this one's confirmed female through the same method with the microscope, so I know it's a girl. I'm so excited to have her. I don't like to really bug them. I don't pet them very much or anything. You can see that, you know, the consequence is that they're not very calm. But it's also nighttime. And that's, you know, when they're awake. And they're like, I don't want to be pet. But you could tell, like, with Sabrina, I've had her for a few years. And she's calmed down because of it. There you go. So it all depends on how much you... uh like socialize with them whether or not they're calm or hyper so we'll just video at Arcus for a second while I talk to you about this is reptiles are not like other animals um they're wild and they're not gonna be like a dog or a cat these guys have no social structure really in the wild they don't hang out with each other they don't need each other and they don't want to rely on anything or anyone else unlike say a mammal where you'd have a dog, a cat, or even a horse, where there's this social aspect to their lives. These animals don't have that. So don't expect them to want to hang out with you. Don't expect them to want to be around you. What they want is food and their needs met. Like Arcus here is begging. He's cute. He's sweet. There's nothing wrong with him. He's a good, calm animal. He's a beautiful pet. 
it's just not the same. And I have to understand he's very tolerant of me, just like the crested geckos are varying degrees of tolerant of me and will become more tolerant with time. Oh, I hate it when it does that. See, he'd come right out. He like thinks I have food. Marcus, I don't have food. You just got fed. You've been fed this week. Okay, I'm gonna touch you. I'm coming out. Yeah. Well, give me your body and I'll take you out. Yep, I just fold him right up and here he is. Put him on my bed. See, he's my calmest pet. I would say he's, if you want like one that you can hang out with a little more, corn snakes are the bomb. Uh, crested geckos aren't as friendly. So this is just kind of meeting my animals, I guess, more than vivarium. Oh no, my finger's in the way. Well, you can see how great I am at videography. We'll get better. But this has been 15 minutes of me jabbering at you, so we'll see what comes out and see what we end up doing with this video log. I got to show you my vivariums today, and I'll tell you, show you more about them next time. So leave a comment of things you're interested in or like to know more of. Um, everyone has their own methods for taking care of these animals. I do my best to replicate natural conditions, even though I don't have that uh, capacity in some ways, because like with my babies, they're not in really, I wouldn't say terribly arboreal cages going don't go up my sleeve shoo yeah videotaping a snake is hard i'm just just so you can see it's not the easiest thing in the world to do just got to keep control of the head and you've got it but you notice he doesn't try to bite or strike he's just like wait a minute i don't want to go there all right well i think that's enough of that y'all have a great day and i'll see you next time bye <laughs> Say bye, Argus. Come on, can you sniff my camera? That would be cute. Nah, not into it. No mice. Oh.